One of the great things about San Francisco is that you can walk in almost any direction and find something interesting. Um, and I live in the Mission, so one of my favorite walks to go on is up 30th Street um, through Goat Hill and then kind of around to Douglas Playground. And sometimes on a good day, you can see the ocean. Um, and I recently found someone who liked to walk around in the same area. So Alan Jacobs was an, or is an urban planner. This is a book he wrote, Looking at Cities. Um, and so this is him walking around sort of Diamond Heights, 24th and Diamond. Um, and as you can probably tell from the title, um, he was basically saying that there's a lot you can learn about cities from simply just walking around and looking at things, making simple observations. And while the main point he, or the main reason he was writing the book was he was specifically concerned that urban planners were not relying enough on simple observation and more uh, too much abstract data, he isn't limiting his audience to urban planners, so he's kind of advocating for a more general collective curiosity in terms of just walking around asking why things are the way they are, what came before, and what might be on the horizon. Um, and so tellingly, uh, there are entire paragraphs of this chapter that are just questions. Questions, you know, um, what does it mean that you walk into one area and suddenly all the buildings look different? Um, and they're all just sort of deceptively simple, but it can actually tell you a lot um, about these kinds of places. And I would make the distinction here between um, looking, actually looking, and the kind of looking that you do when you walk from point A to point B. So I think for a lot of us, when you know there's a building that you pass every day on the way to work, um, and if someone asked you what color is that building, you wouldn't even be able to tell them, um, as opposed to going on a walk and just seeing what there is to see without an, any kinds of um, assumptions and asking these questions. Um, and so there's an optical illusion that helps me to think about this way of looking. Uh, unfortunately, it won't work at this distance for you on screen, but um, if you took the thing uh, that's on the left and uh, were to draw it on a piece of paper and hold it up in your blind spot, so we all have a blind spot, right? Um, your brain actually doesn't know what's in the blind spot, so it sees a line on top and it sees a line on the bottom, and it correctly, somewhat correctly assumes that there's probably a line in the middle, so you actually see what's on the right. Even though you intellectually know that there is actually this um, circle or blob or whatever you drew there, you know that it's there, but you're seeing something that's not true. And so for me, uh, this is sort of a metaphor for what you do and don't see based on your assumptions about what you do or don't expect to find there. Um, so for me as an artist, my question is what, what's in there? And I think that's also the same question for, for Alan Jacobs. So um, I'm an artist who works primarily with internet-based imagery and specifically Google Maps um, makes up a lot of my work. And I've been interested in ways of ironically using something as dematerialized and internet-based as Google Maps to actually give us more access and more information um, about the lived environment, the physical environment that we move throughout. So we often think of the internet as a space that takes us out of reality or physical reality, but is there a way that it could actually give us more information about um, what we're looking at. So I'm, I'm taking what Jacobs was sort of describing, but adding an extra step where you kind of, there's certain things that you need to zoom out and look at them from a different perspective in order to be able to re-enter this perspective um, with more knowledge. So uh, the piece that I'm going to talk about is just called Power Trip, and it's based on the fact uh, that all of the municipal electricity in San Francisco, so that's uh, Muni, libraries, fire stations, public schools, anything that's sort of city-owned, um, comes from Hetch Hetchy, from the dam, which is kind of, you know, a crazy thought. It's really far away. Um, and so the fact that this, you know, something's happening in the Sierra Nevada so that the bus doors can open and close is kind of um, an interesting thought. Um, but this map is the, the only one I was able to find online. It's not very detailed. It's pretty abstract. So I took it upon myself to uh, actually trace it myself. So I was using Google Satellite to visually, very painstakingly trace these towers. Um, it's not always easy. Um, it's a pretty long route, so I was able to trace the entire thing um, with much effort and construct this map. So this is my map. Um, and then I use this map to generate driving directions. Um, and then I, so effectively I was turning a, the regular three hour drive to Yosemite into a seven hour drive, which was probably longer because I got lost at the end. Um, very lost. Um, so anyway, I'll just, I'm just going to show a couple of photos of many more, but just to give you a sense of the kinds of different landscapes that the system passes through. Um, and it was difficult because um, 
the system really doesn't uh, respect the boundaries that we're used to. So it goes through public and private lands, it goes through people's backyards, it goes through, you know, the back of El Del Taco. Um, and, you know, there's entire sections that I just wasn't able to photograph because um, there's no, no way to get there. Um, but as you can see, it kind of goes through Livermore, some farms, goes through Modesto. Um, this is a substation that's in the back of a Del Taco. Um, the fruit stands. And then there's this, so towards the, the sort of second half of the route, it really gets away from the things that you would typically drive past. Um, and so these are really kind of in the middle of nowhere, these substations um, that are incredibly important that we're relying on. Um, this is a wintering home for bald eagles. So it's a area of critical environmental concern. Uh, and then it starts to get into the, the mountains. So um, here you can kind of start to get a sense of the precariousness um, of the system that, you know, these very sort of fragile spindly structures are having to cross entire mountains. Um, and so there's a town on this line called Moccasin that's, uh, the entire town is owned by San Francisco. And everybody who lives in the town works on the systems and they all live um, in these sort of identical, oh, sorry, uh, identical houses. So everyone who lives in the town works on the system. So the town kind of exists for, for that. Um, and this is the powerhouse there. And then after this, uh, it got really, really difficult. So I had to make multiple attempts to sort of finish out this route. Uh, it was only with a um, you know, significant effort that I was able to find the second powerhouse. So here, I just want you to think about this the next time you get on a Muni. The water that's coming down this pipe is what's, is what's powering the bus. Um, so the water from the dam goes underground to this point, and then it kind of comes out of this pipe, which when you look at it in real life, it's really unclear how it was even constructed. Um, and so that water goes down, and then as you can see, it gets converted in this powerhouse, and then kind of clambers up the other side of this canyon. Um, and then there's the dam, so. Um, so yeah, I think um, what maybe you were able to get a sense of in these photos is the sort of vulnerability and precariousness. And what was interesting to me is, uh, it would seem obvious uh, to me that if someone were completely unacquainted with contemporary civilization, uh, that these would be monuments or at least something worthy of fascination. But instead, uh, I and my camera simply aroused suspicion. So um, this is the cul-de-sac in Fremont <laughs> where I was taking photos and a woman came out of her house and started hassling me about taking photos. Um, and just to give you some context, this is my friend who had found a rainbow hula hoop on the side of the road and was hula hooping. My car was blasting disco. I was wearing leopard print and polka dots. I mean, totally um, benign. <laughs> Uh, scene and yet like there was this sort of hostility toward um, us looking at this thing that you're not normally looking at. Um, I got trailed a lot by trucks, you know, ranger trucks at the end and I think it really speaks to the habits um, of looking that uh, it wasn't illegal to take photos of these things but also wasn't expected um, and so the power grid is kind of an example of something that we've learned not to see. Like when you take a photo you're almost surprised that there are power lines in it like they as if they materialized in the photo. Um, so I guess, um, and, and the other thing I would note is that I am an artist, I'm not a researcher, uh, I might be an amateur researcher, but this project really represents uh, what the average person can find given the information that's available online. Um, and so it's interesting, but uh, for me, the reason it's important and the reason that I've been working with infrastructure is that I think, especially in a place like San Francisco, you know, we're all on our phones and we live this very sort of screen-based, one-click shopping kind of existence. Um, and I think there's this danger of thinking that, that it's dematerialized, but actually everything that we, that we do is still very material. We are a physically determined um, species and we live on a planet and there's something arrogant um, and also just um, incorrect about thinking that we don't rely on physical structures for even the things that are immaterial, like the internet. Um, and also infrastructure is the thing that we all have in common and um, all too often don't learn about until something goes wrong with it. Um, so my question has been how can you get people to ask questions about these things before that's your reason for learning about them. Um, and so it's my hope that um, using the sort of curiosity that Alan Jacobs was talking about, but then adding this extra step using the technology and the tools that we have and the ways that we seek information now um, to become more awake to the world around us and therefore more responsible to it. Thanks.